But you have to understand. Yes. Jesus didn't make it possible. None of us would be here. Jesus had to be impossible. The luxuries that we had, we wouldn't even have. Jesus had to be impossible. I don't know how much I'm talking to the church of God. Jesus had to make it possible for any of us to be here alone today. But since he made it possible, we ought to be able to worship him. We ought to be able to praise him. We ought to be able to serve him.
the tree down. Yes. And my father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Amen. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. Yes. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Without me, ye can do nothing. God's word for God's hand. Heavenly Father, we come from God just to say thank you. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for life, love, and strength. We thank you for being a just God and living with all the thoughts as applying all my needs. Now, Lord, as I stand behind this sacred desk, get me down in the world of wisdom, that we have to preach it out of light. And I can preach a word of clarity and understanding, and someone will say, I hear, I hear, what must I hear you say? How do I have that brother cross when you don't see me when the dog that moves it? When the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in my sight. In Jesus' name we pray. I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same will be full much fruit. But without me, he can do nothing. I am the vine. And you are the branches. But without me, he can do nothing. I want to talk to you from the subject today. I heard it through the Bible. I heard it through the Bible. Now, my brothers and sisters, when we look at this scripture, we understand that during this time, Jesus and his disciples had just left what we call the Last Supper. And after they get finished eating, Jesus does something that is very profound that that really blows the mind of his disciples. Because he tells them, he said, I want y'all to sit down and I'm going to wash your feet. And they were looking kind of surprised because they were looking at, well, we follow you, but you want to wash our feet. So, you know, you always got, in every family, you got one person that always got that loud mouth, talking, singing, something. Right. 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 Jesus had a disciple like that. <laughs> Peter was like, my Lord, no, you, ain't, you ain't supposed to be washing your feet. I mean, you ain't about to be doing that. You ain't about to be out. You, know, you ain't washing my feet. But Jesus said, well, if you don't let me wash your feet, then that means you ain't following me like I've shown you. Can I get a witness? He said, because if you don't let me wash your feet, then you can't have nothing to do with me. Can I get a witness? Now, I understand in doing this, he's teaching his disciples a great lesson. The great lesson is not about being served, but it's about how well you serve others. Amen. Jesus understood, yes, I am the Messiah. I am the one. I am the truth, the way, and the life. But in order for me to show you how to treat people, I got to show it with the way I do it, not the way I see it. Because it would have been easy for Jesus to tell somebody else to wash their feet. Yeah. 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 But he said, I'm going to do it to show you how you're supposed to treat all the people. Yeah. 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 Now, I understand. See, you got some people that think they're measured upon all the accolades that they got. Oh. And everything that they do. They talk about how much money they got, but they never talk about how much money that they gave. Oh. Yeah. 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 See, see, see that, that, that's when we get it twisted up. Man. That's where, like Dean McDonald said, love is an action word. Yeah. You can't say you love somebody, but you don't ever show it. Can I get a witness here? See, when Jesus is trying to teach his disciples, you can't say you're living for me, but you don't show that you're living for me. That's what I'm talking about here. See, that, see that, that's the big difference in here. Talking and walking is two different things. 
Kelly with the witness here. You got a lot of people that talk the talk. But they walk, but they lie, that's what they be saying. And they talk to you. Yeah. Jesus was trying to get him to understand. He said, you don't have to understand that this. When I do stuff, I'm leaving an example of what you should do. And we understand that we are living in these days and people are, just like the Bible said, they are all lovers of themselves. Yeah. Can I get a witness in here? They don't care how they treat nobody as long as they took what they have. Can I get a witness in here? But I'll be honest with you. All this stuff you trying to occupy, trying to get down here in heaven, down here on earth, you sure can't take it with you when you leave. Can't get a witness here. So you can gut, drive, slick people, can do people all kind of way. Talk about them, be nasty with them, do whatever you want to do. But you all that got to come back to you one day. Can't get a witness in here. Jesus is an example of how you're supposed to treat people, how you're supposed to love one another. And it's right here in this scripture because if you know anything that happened to this, the woman that betrayed him, he washed his feet as well. Can I get a witness? The Bible said immediately after this, Judas went and betrayed Jesus. Can I get a witness in here? Now we know who Jesus was. And we know Jesus already knew what Judas was going to do. But Jesus didn't treat him no different. That's the example that we must understand. Regardless of how somebody treats you, right. God will hold you accountable for how you treat them. Yeah. Yeah. You got a lot of people, and we got to be careful who we allow to talk in our head. We got to be careful of people who we allow to push and pump us when we're doing something we know we ain't got no business. Because see, the truth of the matter is you can do all this stuff and people will be pushing and priming you, but when you down in your last, them same people that push you out there and do something, you can't find them. You can understand that Jesus said the example to treat everybody the same. Not with the love of Jesus, and don't worry about nothing else, and don't take care of anything else. Can I get a witness in here? The Bible said in this which immediately, Jesus went and betrayed Jesus. And you got some people here saying, nah, I, I ain't doing it. Just like, you know, just like yesterday, we had to clean up. Now, everybody couldn't make it, and we understand. But you know, you got some people that feel they're too big to do certain things. Can I get a witness to that? They, 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 they think their platform allows them to escape from doing stuff. But Jesus said, your platform don't make you no better than nobody else. Can I get a witness to that? Jesus said, let me show you what I do. I'm the Messiah. They followed me, but I'm washing their feet. Right. Can I get a witness in here? And it found me because I said, now, what in the reason would he be washing their feet? Uh-huh. And I had to think about it. And, and the Holy Spirit began to deal with me with this. Because with, with this, he said, well, you got to understand in these days, there were no clothes, shoes. Uh-huh. Everything the disciples of Jesus wore were sandals or even bare feet. And everywhere they went, they had to walk. Can I get a witness to you? And every now and then, while you were just walk with Jesus, your feet gonna get a little dirty. Can I get a witness to you? Every now and then, I don't care how holy you are, I don't care how much scripture you know, I don't care how long you've been serving God, you gonna step in some mess. Can I get a witness? Then you gonna step in some mess. Yeah. Now I wanna let you know right now, <clears throat> ain't none of us All right. so perfect and so holy All right. that we can't step in no mess. Yeah. Can I get a witness in here? Yeah. But here's what I found out about church folk. Uh-huh. Church folk. All right. If they find out about some mess, All and right. they find out about your mess, right. they're trying to blow your mess up bigger than yeah. their mess, yeah. so nobody ain't focusing on that. But what I come to understand is if I'm in some mess and you in some mess, they don't need you making my mess look bigger than yours because we both in some mess and we both need to be washed. What can wash my sins away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So if you happen to step in some mess, understand Jesus can wash all. He's going to wash all that mess away. Yeah. And just understand, every once in a while, we're going to step in some mess, but don't stay there. Once Jesus don't wash it off, you keep on walking. 
Because I'll be honest with you, it's a whole mess down the road. It's a whole mess around the corner. It's a whole mess you're going to have to face. But you just got to understand, I may step in it, but I ain't going to stay there. Ain't nobody so holy that they don't end up in some mess. Can I be the witness here? And it ain't for none of us to look down on somebody when they in their mess. Scripture says if you're going to look down on them, you should be helping them up. Now this scripture, this scripture is very, very profound. Because when, they, when the Jesus starts talking, he says, I am the true God. I said, now Jesus speak. Why you got to say you're the true God? We already know who you are. We already know what you stand for. He said, because I have to put true in there. Because every now and then people get connected to stuff. And as long as they connected to them later on down the road, they find out they who they say they are. So you gotta be watch out who you get connected to. Because some of the bonds that you connected to ain't true. Come to the witness of you. I'm, 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 I'm coming down the road, I'm gonna be real with you. You wanna know why you can't get what you're praying for? Because you ain't connected to the right God. You want to know why you come in here on Sunday and you shout hallelujah, glory, glory, but as soon as you get in the door, you're on the phone talking about somebody in the church? Because you ain't connected to the right God. And you want to you wanna understand why you go through as much stuff as you go through? Because you ain't connected to the right God. Jesus said, I am the true God. Can I get a witness again? See, when you get hooked up to the true God, he said, a true God, when you connect it to me, you produce much fruit. You can't produce no fruit when you one way while you in church, but you're a different way when you get outside. And talk to you. Jesus said, those kind of people I cut off. Can I get a witness in here? He said, and my father, he purchased the one that made he can continue to grant more fruit. Can I get a witness in here? I said, now, he didn't sit there, he didn't get all this. These disciples have been walking with him now for three years. Mm -hmm. All this time. Uh -huh. And he still had to tell them that I am the true God. Yeah. Yeah. Because we got to must understand until we get hooked up with Jesus, yeah. everything we're doing, we're just pitting around in the circle. Yeah. You ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Until you start living for God and living for the call that He has placed upon your life, yeah. you just existed down here on this earth. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't living till you live living for Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Come to the yeah. Jesus said, I am the true God. Somebody in here need to get reconnected to the true God. Somewhere along the way, you got caught up in some mess and you got cut off from the true God. And then you, some people start attaching themselves to you. That'll keep bending you. Now you can't move how you're supposed to move because you attack, you attached to the wrong vine. But if you be able to cut some of the vines loose, that don't mean you no good. And you hold back up to the true God. You know what I'm talking about You just say, I am the true God. And my father is the vine dressing. See, I understand. I said, now wait a minute. He said, you are the true vine. Uh -huh. He said, and, and when I went to the man of all words, mm -hmm. Mr. Webster, Webster said the definition of a vine is a plant whose stem mm -hmm. requires support, all right. which climb by tendrils or twining or creeping along the ground. Uh -huh. all right. I said, okay, I am the true vine, mm -hmm. but my father mm -hmm. is the vine dress. So that let me know Jesus was trying to tell us as he said, I am the true vine. Yeah. It is my job to support you. Right. Uh -huh. But my father being the vine dressing is his job to keep you. Right. See, the vine will support you in what you're doing and be there with you and it'll keep on moving as good as moving. But somebody gotta be there to keep the vine. Somebody gotta be there to cut some of them bad limbs off the vine when it's start down. Somebody gotta be there to keep the vine up. I don't assist the kids to see the sex and over that about flower people. Somebody got to be there to understand that. Somebody got to nurture, somebody got to pull in to this vibe. And I don't know about you, but you don't need the wrong people pulling into you. You gotta be careful who you let pull into you. Because what they pull into you is what you're gonna pull out. And if you wonder why people start acting strange around you and start acting funny around you, but you gotta look at what you're doing. You gotta get a witness in here. You gotta get connected to the right God. 
Can I get a witness in here? And when you connect it to the right vibe, things will begin to move. Things will begin to happen. You begin to understand, you know what? I might have shit did what I did, but I understand I was in a place of some mess. But I thank God that he washed me and he cleaned me and he got me up that I can move past this mess. And I can keep on moving. I can keep on serving God. Now I can be a part of the vine that's bearing some good fruit. Can I get a witness in here? Do I have any fruit bearers in here? Do I have anybody in here say, I'm, I'm hooked up to the fruit vine? I don't know what I'm doing to say. I'm tangled up. I'm tired up. I'm twisted up in Jesus. Now I understand what she was talking about. The girl said she was wrapped up in the true vine. Can I get a witness in here? And then it's see. Now you understand when you hook up to the true body, uh -huh. when trouble and stuff begin to come, yeah. you begin to hear some things through the body. Yeah. Can't get a witness in here. When people are talking about you and seem like everybody got something to say about you right. and they're going around doing their thing, the true body, you can say, I heard through the body. Yeah. The spirit of the Lord said that my enemy came and my foes came to attack me. Yeah. The spirit of the Lord lifted me. Yeah. I heard through the Bible when I was sick, he said, healing in my body. All I got to do is call upon the elders that they had upon me, and it shall be healed. Can I get a witness? Is there anybody in here that heard some things through the Bible? And you thought you were found in your last path, and you didn't know what you was going to do. And you had more things, and you had prayer. I heard through the Bible that my thoughts are surprised. Thank you. 